What is happening guys? Mike here. Welcome back to the channel for an all new product review. Today we are continuing on with our look at some international brands with today's coming to us straight from Malaysia. This is actually a brand that we've covered before in the past, but since we last saw them, they've gone through a complete overhaul. New branding, new products, pretty much new everything. And now the new video. That's why we're doing a new video on them. This is my review of Vintage Arm. All right, guys, once again, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited to have you guys back here with me today. Again, we're talking about vintage armor, which you guys may remember from a long, long while back when we looked at their old products and old brand, really, in the grand scheme of things. It's an old brand at this point, but back then they had the Hibat and the Laiku. I don't know if I've ever figured out how to say that, but it doesn't matter. It's old products. It's old news, not fake news, but the new news if that makes any sense. The new, I'm just gonna stop. This time around too, we have more products to look at, not just two. We've actually got a total of four products to look at today. So needless to say, we've got a lot of info to get through today, four total products. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Coming across my desk today is four products from the Malaysian brand Vintage Armor. Up first is the water-based pomade. According to the brand, this is a standard water-based or gel type pomade that offers 24 hour hold protection, even against heat. It achieves this through a strong hold high shine formula that also offers an easy water rinse and a fresh green apple tea scent. Price wise, we're looking at a modest $12 US for 3.5 ounces after conversion from the Malaysian ringgit. Looking inside the jar here, we got pretty much a standard gel type product, nothing we haven't seen before. It scoops out nice and slick, but when you break it down, you do get the unusual sense that it's more dry than sticky. Moving on now to the cream pomade. Again, according to the brand, the cream pomade is a water-based formula and is designed to create a perfect flexible style. To achieve this, it employs a firm to heavy hold, natural shine with a royal floral blossom scent. Price-wise here, we have the same 3.5 ounce jar for $14.46 US after conversion. Looking inside this jar here as well, we have a nice creamy, but still nice and thick pomade. I do have to say, I like that it's still got that thickness to it as you scoop it out and break it down. It still has that slickness, but not too much tack, but it's still got that nice thick presence to it. It really gives you the feeling that it's going to have some nice control for styling. Next up here is the Styling Clay. This too is a water-based formula that is designed to provide high volume, high texture, everything a clay is supposed to provide. To deliver on this, the formula contains a firm hold with low shine, and for the scent, we have a fresh herbal pomegranate. The size and price for this one is the same as the cream pomade at $14.46 US after conversion for that same 3.5 ounce jar. Looking inside the jar on this one, we got pretty much the same consistency as the cream pomade, maybe slightly thicker from that clay that's present. I do think there's a bit of dryness there, but there's not much. It's not as dry in the hand as I expected it to be for sure. It's also not very sticky at all. So styling with this one is going to be very interesting for sure. Last up, we got the grease. This is the Vintage Armor Oil-Based Pomade. Here we got some old school grease designed to deliver a firm hold with high shine to pull off those clean cut styles. According to the brand, it is designed for thicker hair types and comes in a pine and vanilla scent. The price on this one is the same as the clay and cream pomade. And of course, it's got the same 3.5 ounce size as well. Looking inside the jar on this one, we got really what one would expect from some old school grease, although this has no waxiness to it at all. It honestly feels like it's straight petrol or maybe like a slicker version of petroleum jelly. It's very slick, hardly sticky at all, and it really makes you wonder how this one's going to perform in the demo. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to jump right into the demos here. We're not going to waste any time with it. I'm going to start first with the easiest one. Let me find it here. The water-based 
pomade. Now, this is a gel type, so of course that means damp hair. And for this one, I found out that I really only needed about two scoops to get the job done. For all the tests today, I'll be using freshly washed hair with no enhancers, pre-stylers, anything like that. And here, of course, we are starting with damp or towel dried hair. It's a gel type. We got to start with damp hair here and two scoops of the pomade, like I said. What I noticed here was the pomade was a little more dry than sticky, which is a bit unusual for a gel type, but I did find that it still worked for application, shaping, overall sculpting, everything that I enjoy about a product. Using a comb was also very nice and slick. I didn't get any tug or anything there. What I did notice, however, was it did begin to harden a little fast, just a tiny bit, enough to notice it really, but it didn't matter too much because I was fairly happy with the style that I got here in the end. Moving right along here too to the endurance, this is four hours in and as you can see it's hardened a lot. It's pretty much helmet head at this point. I mean my hair is not going to snap like a twig, but it's hardened a lot. And at eight hours in we can see that it's not quite moved really. It hasn't really moved for the most part, maybe a tiny, tiny bit, but that hardness is still very much there. And as I attempt to restyle, first by spritzing some water, of course, to reactivate the product and then combing, I actually think that the end result here looks better than it did before. Now, after that restyle, I will tell you guys that it just hardens right back up and goes straight back to what it was before. So this one really just goes on forever. As far as the washout goes, straight out with water, not a trace left behind. It's really solid in that aspect. And as for the scent, I actually thought it was quite nice, not too strong. I do think it was nice and fresh. It's not overbearing. It doesn't make me choke when it's in my hair. So for me, that's the biggest deal of all. I am, however, going to save all final thoughts till the end after I present all of the major info to you guys on all of the products. We got three left after this, but now we are going to move on to the clay. And as you guys know, I love me a good clay. And as usual for me, demoing this clay is going to start with clean, dry hair and two scoops. This clay really is more smooth than dry and sticky. Not to say it's not dry at all. You can still feel a bit of that as well, but as far as clays go, it's actually pretty tame. That does, however, mean the application is quite nice, but I can tell right away that the hold may be an issue. It is somewhat holding, and of course I could just add more product in, but I found that if you add too much, you can easily overpower the hair. So just like with anything else, it's all about balance. That hold though was a bit light for me and as we can see here being only three hours into my day a lot has lifted it still looks fairly decent but for some reason it brought my waves out in full force here's a look six hours in too and we can just we can just see that a lot of it's gone it's lost volume it's lost more hold and i'd have to say this one didn't quite make it a full day now really i think this clay has some serious potential but Really, it just wasn't strong enough for me. I really had some high hopes for it, and I'll speak more to that towards the end, but right now we do gotta keep moving on. We're gonna keep moving on with this video. It's already gonna be long enough as it is. And we're gonna move on now here to the grease. And for this one, it of course, all started with some damp hair, and for this one I used three scoops total to achieve my style. As far as oil-based pomades go, this one is quite tame. It's so smooth, hardly sticky at all, very creamy, and as you add it in, if you're using damp hair like me, it will provide you with some resistance, which is quite odd considering how light it feels in the hand. That Petro, which by nature deflects moisture, kind of fights with the moisture still present in my hair, and does put up a bit of resistance while applying, but it's not bad. Once you actually start combing it in, it feels a lot different. It actually works its way into the hair all the way and really presents itself as ready to style. What got me about this pomade though was actually how well it held up without having that sticky waxy presence. It has just the right amount of balance between control and hold to give you great styling ability and really nice sculpting action. Again, moving right into that endurance here, this is four hours in and as expected, there's not much movement there. It does look a bit like it's settled into the hair, which is quite odd for an oil base if you think about it. That's not something we see very often. And that continues into the eight hour footage here. As we can see, it almost looks different in the hair. And, and as I try to restyle it here, I can actually feel it's different too. It's lighter. It's definitely settled into the hair, which again is different. It's very nice actually. It still controls the hair. It's softer, a lot softer. And once again, I have to say, I like the look of it here way more than 
than I did to begin with. Now, honestly, this one here was another from the line that just went on and on and on. It easily lasted about 14 hours, if not longer. As far as next day styling goes, with it being a Petro pomade, I did look at the next day styling as well. It's It works, it's not bad, but it's not as good if you've tried to rinse your hair. If you don't rinse your hair at all, it does stay pretty golden, but I found that even if you just, you know, run some water through your hair like I do fairly often, it does kind of wash out some of the support from the product. For the scent, to me, it's like the typical oil-based scent. I've seen it like, oh, I'm allergic, sorry. I've seen it, it's not a bad scent. Again, me being allergic is just me. I've seen it though in like a million oil-based pomades before this. I do think it was a bit strong. I feel like it's a bit overbearing. I felt it just really in my face all day long. And But more on that in a minute because we still have to take a look at what I consider to be the MVP of this line, the cream pomade. For this one, just like the others, maybe except the grease, I tested it on damp and dry hair, and I had very different results on damp and dry hair with this one, and I wish I had time to show both, but I chose to show the one that I thought looked the best, and for me, that was three scoops on dry hair. The difference here between dry and damp hair on this one was insane. It was apples and oranges, really, but here on dry hair, I think it performs excellent, starting with this nice and slick application to the just complete buttery combing process. The slickness within the product is just so easy and responsive. I really enjoyed it. Once again, moving into the endurance here, we can see at four hours in, this style looks awesome. It's still holding. The shape is still there. It's nice and clean cut and really I'm just loving these results. At eight hours in, I did notice some of the volume had gone from the style, but as you can see here with just a bit of finger combing, hardly any really, that volume comes back and is totally restored. This is awesome in my opinion and absolutely an ideal outcome for eight hours in on any endurance test. Now for the washout on this one, it was fantastic. It rinsed out just with water and it actually conditioned my hair as it left, leaving it feeling just nice and soft, luscious. I definitely enjoyed that. And for the scent, it was nice and light, not overbearing. Hopefully I don't choke again. I think this one is a little bit sweeter. You can see I'm not choking like the other ones. I don't seem to be as allergic to this one because it's a nicely blended and smoother scent, but whew, I believe that's it for the information. Good Lord, all four products. I think I'm actually starting to sweat doing this. Unbelievable. Anyway, now that I provided all the standard info, let's talk final thoughts. The gel type pomade, it was just okay for me. I think for folks in hot climates that struggle with getting hold from products of that type because it melts, this is going to work great for you. It did dry up just a tad too quick and the hardening was a bit too much, but I'm in a different climate. I'm. It's freezing here right now. It's snowing outside right now. So it's a vastly different thing. So I think for people in your area of the world or their area of the world, I should say, it's going to work awesome. For me, I need different things. So I don't think it's fair to judge it too harshly because I think it did do what it was designed to do. The styling clay too, that one, I got to be honest with you, it left me wanting more. I thought the texture and volume was great, but for my hair, I think it was just a tad too thick for it. I could really feel it wanting to work, but that hold just left super fast. I think thin or fine haired folks though, you guys are going to find a lot of success with this one. I think it should really work out well for you guys in that capacity. And you really, if you got fine or thin hair, this sculpting clay should be on your radar for sure. Now switching back over to the grease, the oil-based pomade. I think this one was actually well done, possibly my runner up for MVP of this line. I really liked how slick it was. It was super slick, but not overly greasy or oily, especially when we saw it settle in the hair throughout the day. That was a really cool feature for me. Finally, though, we come to my personal favorite from this line. This is just my favorite from this line. Don't get all excited now. This is just my favorite from this line, the cream pomade. 
Out of all four products, this one easily performed the best for me. I think it's really well done. It allows for high volume styling while providing nourishment without losing shape. And throughout the day, it just got even better. And not to mention really that conditioning effect that I found during the rinsing. I just freaking loved that. I thought that was a brilliant touch and I was just overall really impressed by that specific product. But I believe that pretty much, I think I just combined the words pretty and believe. I believe. I believe that pretty much does it though. That's my thoughts on this four product lineup. Currently, they are selling these only off of their Facebook page, which will be in the description as usual, along with all types of good info that you guys should be looking at. Wink, wink. Thank you again for checking out this video with me today. Make sure you tap that thumbs up for me as well and drop me a comment there if you'd like. That is it though for today's episode. We got through it. We made through it. It's a little long probably, but we did make it through it. I will be back with you guys again very soon here with another new video. I got a lot of cool stuff coming up here on the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, you need to do that and turn on those notifications as well because I got a lot of awesome stuff, including some giveaways coming up. So don't miss that. I I will be back with you guys again here very soon. And until then, take it easy. I'll see you next time.